Today we're going to, uh, or I am, going to make a lino cut, linoleum block cut. And uh, a disclaimer, this, uh, what you're going to see if you stick around long enough will be to make a lino cut in print, <clears throat> but uh, this will be done in the folk art, if you want to call it that. I've had no, no training beyond what this cat has showed me uh, in art. And he's pretty good, but uh, if you really like to do this and it wets your, uh, your whistle, uh, I would seek out more informed sources. But anyway, I'll, I'm going to go through this because it's kind of fun, even for the uh, untrained, such as myself. So anyway, uh, we'll take you through it. I got my tools and equipment here ready to go. I got the ink roller here. I got the ink, a little tube, and I got this metal thing here that came with the little kit I, I picked up, Speedball, it happens to be a brand that makes them. And then here you've got the, the cutter, okay, this is what you cut the uh, linoleum. In, in my case, I'm going to be using a, a rubber block. It's real easy to cut. I've never tried to use a rubber block. You can use wood if you don't have a linoleum to cut, or linoleum blocks. We'll show you how we get that ready. But this little cutter, the, the little cutting uh, blades are stored in the handle. I panicked when I first got this and thought, where, where the heck are the cutting blades? And I heard, oh, they're in the handle. Okay, great. So I thought, well, I've only got one blade I'm going to cut with, I guess. So no, I only really use two or three anyway. But anyway, here's how, here's how you do it. Hope you enjoy this and uh, maybe you'll do one yourself and have some fun doing it. I purchased this rubber in a bulk, kind of in large pieces, but you can buy it as this little block already glued to the block. So it comes on a piece of probably plywood. It's pretty stable wood. So you can get these already on the block, or you can buy assorted sizes of this rubber or linoleum and then glue it on the block yourself and, s and save a little money. So I picked up a piece of wood out of the garage. It's just a piece of pine, one by 12, I guess. So I'm gonna glue this piece of rubber onto the wood block, this piece of pine. Uh, if you're using linoleum, you do the same way. You can buy the bulk linoleum, or you can buy it, as I mentioned, already on the block. So I'm going to use a spray adhesive. I'm going to spray the back of this piece of rubber. And uh, again, you can you can buy these already made. They cost a little bit more, so I went the cheap route. And then you would spray also the wood. So spray the, the back of the wood, where you're going to glue this uh, piece of rubber, or linoleum, whichever you're using. And uh, again, apply the adhesive spray and that makes a pretty tight uh, hold. It's kind of a contact cement. You, if you have contact cement, you can use that rubber cement, uh, anything that'll get an even adhesion surface. So if you get them while they were still wet, you can move them around with that spray adhesive at least, but once you let it get tacky and you stick it down, it's stuck. It's not gonna move, so uh, this is still wet and I was able to get it adjusted evenly around the edges. So you get that stuck on there good, and you're, uh, pretty much ready to start start cutting once that sets up a little bit and it's firm that gives you a piece that you can work with so once you get your block ready to go or you probably have already got your design which you want to cut out you make a drawing of it and you get a piece of tracing paper if you're going to and the reason I'm using this tracing paper there's a bit of a problem with block cutting when you make this cut and you put the print on there, it's going to be backwards, okay? You get a mirror image effect. You have to put it on the block reverse, okay? Kind of backward. Especially if you got any kind of lettering. So I'm taping this piece of tracing paper over my design, and I'm going to trace the design onto the tracing paper. You, you could draw right on the tracing paper. Uh, because it's kind of important because um, it's got to do with composition. Because when you put this drawing together you're looking at it one way and composition kind of means you know uh, layout the way your eye moves around the the page so I've got this all traced up and I'm gonna flip it over like that now that now it's backwards all right so I'm gonna put it on my block and I'm going to get that design on there uh, in reverse okay again because when you print it it's gonna come out the way you want it to look it'll, it'll be the other way around if you got letters, there's, there's no other way. Plus, it's almost impossible to make a composition or the, you know, the way the objects are on the page uh, to, to create interest 
and do it backwards. So you really, you know, it's kind of a problem you have to deal with. So you take a piece of carbon paper or a piece of uh, old time, um, uh, what? Yeah, I guess they call it carbon paper. This is graphite paper, same kind of thing. If you don't have this kind of paper, you can take a pencil and just on the back of the tracing paper, just scribble back to make it all, all lead, you know, all scribbled in. And that will also transfer, okay? So what you're doing is transferring the, the backwards image onto your page. You know, you could draw it right on the block if you if you could, you know, imagine it backwards somehow, but it would be very difficult, I would think. So anyway, um, getting this image transferred on, onto the block so that it looks right when I print it. It's a little tedious. You have to kind of go over it a couple times. In this case, the carbon paper that I was using wasn't very good or just didn't transfer as clean as I'd like, but it was enough that I could get, you know, my, my, my layout together, my position of where it was, pretty faint. So I went back over it again with a pen. So now I've got it all drawn up here, and I'm going to start cutting it out using the cutter, and there's four or five different tips that come with it. This little kit, I think it was like 19 bucks. So it's very inexpensive to, to do one of these if you want to do it. You'll need to get some paper. I'll talk about that in a minute, but th th there's various size cutters or, or blades that you slip into this handle. Uh, depending upon what you're trying to cut out, you want to take out large sections. There's a deeper gouge for that. And there's small, smaller cutters for detail work. So I'm using kind of a, the second smallest cutter that was in the little kit there because the, the small one I had, it was just too small for, you know, for what I was doing to get anywhere. So I'm cutting around the letters here first. I'm going to cut those out uh, first because they're pretty much set in you know how they're going to look. We simply uh, going to remove the, the the rubber or the linoleum from around the the thing. So you get, while you're doing this, yet you're always thinking, okay, it's almost like a negative. Okay, whatever is sticking up is going to be black. Whatever I'm cutting away when I'm done will be a light. Will be white. It'll be the color of the paper. So you kind of got to be thinking like that so you don't cut away uh, the wrong thing. You know, so it, it's, it's fun. You, it, it, it's kind of relaxing to, to just kind of carve on this thing. And again, you can't do any uh, particular damage. You, you could cut too much and mess up your block. But And of course, when, once you do, that's, that's it. You got to start pretty much start, start over if you make a bad uh, cut. Stuff cuts fairly easy, comes off, especially this rubber, it's even easier than linoleum to handle. Although, you've got to have a very sharp cutter if you're going to cut this rubber because it, it, it you can't just bludgeon it with a, with a dull knife, it, it just won't cut clean. So you got to make sure you have uh, good sharp cutters. So I'm going to put a little bit of ink on this roller uh, surface here, it's just a black piece of sheet metal. It's going to be hard to see probably because the ink is also black. But I'm going to take uh, this roller and I'm going to roll this stuff out to, to get it all over the roller without getting too much on it. Because if you've got too much on your roller, you're going to clog up your, your block here. All right. So you roll it out kind of thin, and then we're going to try to roll it on, see how it looks. Yeah, it should work. Okay, we're going to get it all over the block. You can see that. Just a little more on there. Get the whole thing wet. Don't get it on the table. You Wife or husband will kill you. Oh, I did it. Keep a rag handy. 
This is water soluble ink, so I'm not terribly worried about it. It's going to come off. So once you've got this thing inked up, you can try to do a print. So I take a piece of paper, it's kind of a heavier cardboard, and then you put it on here. Oh, I made a mess. And you take something like that and you rub it over it. Whatever's handy. Don't use a cat. All right. They got a name for, for this. You can buy one. I had one. I don't know whatever happened to it. And then, uh, you know, just rub it all over the print. Get the ink to adhere to the paper. And let's see. And there it is. That's a little. That's a little bit not bad for the first go. I'm going to ink it up a little more. Try it again. Printing press is going. I got some kind of gob here. It's messing up the works. Uh, there goes the cat. A little more ink down. Uh, all right. So I'm uh, back, and I noticed I cleaned my wood block off, and I cleaned the roller off, and, and, and the pan, and everything, because I noticed a few little things on the print uh, that I actually some details I forgot that didn't transfer from my drawing here to the to the print. So I'm going to go back in here, and I'm going to make a few adjustments on the block, and I'm going to finish uh, those couple little details, and I'm going to print some more. So anyway, and this is something you can do if you don't like, you know, at, at first what you have, you can, do, you, can, you can make adjustments and you'll see as a kind of a test print, you know, how the thing's going to look. And if you, something's missing or out of adjustment, you can't make a few adjustments. You can cut stuff away, but you can't put it back. So if you're cutting, uh, keep that in mind. Uh, once you cut it, it's gone. So at any rate, I'm going to make a few adjustments and print a few more. So I've gone back and... Uh, Touched up a few little spots here. I did some stuff on the sails to make them look a little more three-dimensional. All right, let's go again. A little more ink. I think that's the best one yet. Not perfect. Of course, these things have the imperfections sometimes, sometimes add to the design, but probably not so much in this case. All right. Well, that's how you do it. Make your own wood uh, lino cut, linoleum cut print. Thanks for watching. Take care and be safe. <laughs>